Cool. Yeah, hey everyone. Um, as is tradition, uh, this year I will give this exact same talk, exact same title. Um, once again, what's new in the Julia extension for VS Code? Um, we originally didn't plan to give this talk because neither David nor I had too much time to work on the extension over the last year or so. Uh, but luckily, David did find some time to work on it over the last one or two months. And um, there'll be a bunch of new features and improvements coming. Um, some of them are already available in the pre-release version of the extension, so feel free to check that out. It should be pretty easy to just switch over to that if you have the extension installed. Um, but we've decided not to push any of them to the production version just so the extension doesn't break during JuliaCon, where I assume some of you are using it. Um, so yeah, what's happened over the last year? Um, we've got a few nice new features like inlay hints, notebook debugging, environment variables for debug launch configs, and a lot of changes to the test item framework. I'll just go over all of these in a little bit of detail. Um, some of you might have seen Cthulhu already. It's a really good package for figuring out what's going on with types in your code. Um, and Zentric has contributed a basically, yeah, integration with VS Code. So if you use Cthulhu in the integrated REPL, you can get um, basically all of the output in the editor as well, which is what you see here. You get type output. Uh, and can optionally also get warnings about type instability and so forth in the editor. This is also a very extensible uh, mechanism. So if you want to use that for whatever functionality you might build, for whatever tooling you might build, um, you can just use this MIME type and uh, show method to instruct the editor to, to display uh, information in line. There's also some very, very basic static, uh, static inline hint um, support. And that's what you can see here. So in this case, we're just printing the uh, parameter names for function calls, which might be useful in some cases and if they're descriptive enough. So maybe consider not naming all of your arguments x, y, and z. Right, what else? Um, David has spent some time rewriting the um, debug adapter, so that's the backend basically for all debugging in uh, the extension. And it now correctly follows the specified protocol, so it should be easy to use that in various places, like in our own notebooks, but also in, um, wait, I think that comes in a second. Anyways, um, but also in other editors like NeoVim and so on. We also um, support environment variables in debug launch configurations now. So if you're using that functionality in VS Code, right, you can write your own um, JSON file to spin up a debugger in a certain context. Then you can set your own environment variables here. Um, test items were something we announced last year. Um, there's this whole like framework, and now it is also very easy to go into the UI and debug a certain test item, which I think has been a fairly widely requested feature. And something pretty cool that's coming uh, soon with probably Julia 1.11 and newer, but maybe some of this will also get backported. So in that case, it'll be <laughs> available earlier. Uh, is coverage support. So VS Code itself recently got a coverage viewer um, just in the mainline VS Code. And um, in the pre-release version of the extension, if you're on 1.11 or newer, uh, you can already make use of that. And it'll tell you which lines in your code actually got hit by your tests. Right, um, aforementioned test item integration got improved by quite a bit. Uh, typically, test items are supposed to be completely um, standalone, right? There's no context from other test items leaking into them. But in many cases, you need to do some setup. 
um, or inject just a module into each of these test items. So those are supported now with um, test module and test snippet and this um, setup argument for test items. And yeah, it'll look like this in your code. Um, yeah, just um, like I mentioned some of this earlier already. Um, the debugger now properly supports a DMP um, protocol. So there's this repository for NeoVim support for the debugger. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check that out. Deepak did great work on that. And I think there's a demo um, in the Julia VS Code dev channel as well. Yeah, I'm running out of time, uh, so I'll just skip the under the hood stuff. Um, if you're interested in any of that, feel free to check out the packages um, or just chat with us on Discourse, GitHub, Zulip, or Slack. Um, or just ask me in person. I'll be around here at JuliaCon, and tomorrow at the Hackathon, I'll most likely be working on the extension as well. Thanks. Any question about uh, the speech earlier? Hi, thanks, Sebastian. I was wondering the the new coverage function in VS Code for Julia. Does it only work with test items or with, with any kind of test suite? And is there some setup that we need to do? So I think it currently only works with test items, but um, for details, you'll have to ask David. I didn't implement any of this, so. <laughs> Hey, nice talk. Um, do you have any mm, coverage for a uh, module extension, like um, static linking and like does it already work? Sorry, for what? Uh, mod module extensions. Right, we don't. So um, package extensions are widely or uh, yeah, fairly unsupported right now. Um, we have some plans, or I have some plans to get those or to improve support for those, but it's not super easy because um, the current infrastructure we have for foreign packages basically doesn't really easily allow for this sort of context switching based on the environment. Uh, what do you need to do to activate this Cthulhu type um, inlay? Nothing. Um, you just need to run Cthulhu in the integrated Julia REPL. And you'll get a, like in the um, uh, key bindings section in Cthulhu, you'll get some more items that are related to VS Code. So just lowercase v or uppercase v, I think. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Just one last question. Uh, is there any plan to change the backend parser from CST parser to Julia syntax since that seems to be the future now? Yes, for sure. So part of the test item rewrite that David did is also, or well, part of that was also to write the Julia Workspaces packages, package um, that does parsing based on Julia syntax. So all of the test item detection is based on Julia syntax. But so far, we haven't had the time to switch all of the rest of the uh, implementations over to Julia syntax. But that's definitely in the cards, yes. Thank you. Let's give another round of applause for Sebastian, the speech. Thank you. Thank you.